All right, so this is chapter 11.1, Depreciation Units of Production Exercises. So if you guys remember that what happened yesterday, if you have your um, review sheet out or something that has your formulas on there, this will be the perfect time to take it out because now we are going to be conducting this exercise. So question number one through three. So let's take a look. Okay. You purchased a printer for $150 with no salvage value. Okay. Its useful life is five years and it can uh, print or sorry, produce up to 10,000 pages. Okay. And you put this printer into service on January 12th. All right. So first off, what did we buy? We bought a printer. How much was the printer? One fifty. What was the salvage value? All right, no salvage value. Uh, useful life. Five years. Five years. How many units can it produce? 10,000. And what's the date that we placed into service? Uh, the 12th of January. 12th of January. All right, so let's go ahead and break down one at a time. So this is assuming that at the end of the year is when we depreciate. Okay, so in this case, if I place my asset into service as of January 12th, Does that mean I depreciate for the full year? Yes. Yes. All right, so let's start with the very first one, okay? What's my depreciation basis going to be? I have the answers to because there's no salvage value. Good, so 150 minus zero, which is the... Cost of, cost of the asset minus uh, salvage, which gives you 150. Okay. What is going to be the per unit rate? by the depreciation basis by the estimated units produced. Is that, all, is that correct? Mm -hmm. To get zero, let me expand that, to give me 0 0.1 and a half cents. Okay. So then what is going to be my depreciation expense for year one? So how did you figure that number out? It's the number of units produced that year times per unit rate. Good. $31.50. Okay. So then what's going to be my accumulated depreciation for the first year? Wait, wait, wait. On the depreci depreciation expense, how did you get that? You um, multiply the, the 150 by 10,000? No. It's a number of, number of units produced that year, which would be 2,100. Yes. Times oh. per unit rate. 
Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, so then what's the cumulative appreciation? So the formula is previous year's accumulated appreciation plus, plus the current year's appreciation, but it's the first year, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, that should be Okay. Not the units produced, but what's the expense? Thirty-one fifty. Thirty-one fifty. Okay. So then, if that's the if my accumulated appreciation for year one is thirty-one fifty, what is going to be my book value? How did you get that? I took the um, the cost of the item um, minus the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation. Okay. If you're using Excel, because I want to be constantly using a number, I'm going to use absolute cell referencing, all right, where you have the little uh, dollar signs in front of the row and then in front of the column. And that makes it so that is the F, I think I believe that is the F4 button, allows you to shift the cell to um, become absolute or not, right? Just a little FYI there. So then um, I'm going to constantly be taking this 150 here, and I'm going to be subtracting out my um, depreciation, accumulated depreciation, okay? To get one eighteen fifty. Okay. All right. All right. For year two, what's my depreciation basis? One fifty. One fifty. Right. It's the same thing here. Right. It's gonna be one fifty minus zero, gives you one fifty. So then, what's my per unit rate going to be? Yes, it's going to be the same. Okay. So then this time, what is going to be my depreciation expense? I got 33, is that correct? Good. All right, so then now that I have for the second year, I have depreciation expense for 33. What is my accumulated depreciation here? So it's the previous year's accumulated depreciation. Is it forty nine fifty? Forty nine fifty. No. Where did you get forty nine fifty? I don't know. So it's the previous year's accumulated depreciation, which is how much? How much was my previous year's de accumulated depreciation? Twenty-two hundred. No, your previous year. Um, uh, 
3150. All right. Well, okay. What's an expense? Okay. That's not an, an expense. Right now, we're only looking at accumulated depreciation. What is my current year's depreciation? $33. So total this up and what do I get? $64.50. Okay. So then now, because this is what I, uh, I totaled up, right? I have $31 from the previous year. I have $33 from the next year. So then now, what is my total book value? Since I've already spent or used this much from my machine. I used a, so far a total of $64.50 of my machine. So and in this case, what is my value of my sh machine right now? What's, what's my book value? Eighty-five fifty. Okay, good. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to year three. What is my depreciation basis? It's the same, 150. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell reference this and make sure they're absolute. Okay, and I'm just going to drag this floor, this all the way down because I know every year my depreciation basis is going to stay the same. What about my per unit rate? It also stays the same. It also stays the same. So I'm going to do the formula like this. Absolute here. Because I know that every year it's going to stay the same. Okay. So then the only difference here is going to be my depreciation expense. So for year three, what was my depreciation expense? Okay, so this is this time one and a half cents times nineteen hundred gives you twenty eight fifty. Good. Okay, so this time, right now, I currently have sixty four fifty. Right, I just depreciated an additional twenty eight dollars and fifty cents. So what's going to be my accumulated depreciation this time? $93. $93. So then if I get $93 for my accumulated depreciation, that's how much I used so far. What is the what is my book value? $57. Go ahead and move on to year four. What's my depreciation expense for year four? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Okay. So then what's going to be my accumulated depreciation? Okay. So then that brings my book value to become $27. Excellent. Last but not least, let's go ahead and do the last one. Okay. If 
I have 1,800 units produced that year. What is going to be my depreciation expense? 27. And then what is my total accumulated depreciation for year five? 150 to bring my book value now to how much? One fifty minus one fifty gives you zero. Okay, so there you go. That's how you use a depreciation table to solve for your fixed assets and depreciate them. So this, once again, this is based off of a capacity, right? In this case, everything panned out perfectly. If you actually equal sum this, it would equal to 10,000 exactly. So in this case, we got lucky that we produced exactly 10,000 units, okay? Once again, the, once you solve for depreciation basis and the rate, it stays the, sta the same all the way throughout the years, okay? And then the only difference here is going to be the depreciation expense because it's based on how many items you produced that year, okay? And then once again, the end, the, the fifth year, my accumulated depreciation should match my uh, depreciation basis. And once again, my book value should always equal to salvage value. So at the end of this asset, I said there was no salvage value. At the end of the fifth year, boom, no salvage value. Okay. Now, of course, for any reason that, let's say, you, you produce less on year five, you can continue on to year six because the assumption here is that you have to be within capacity, okay? As in the, the asset can last you a lot longer as long as you're within capacity, okay? So let's go ahead and let's, let's do number two and number three. So it says here, record the adjustment entry for the first year and the second year, okay? So here I wanna record my expense okay so i'm assuming this is december 31st of the first year so what should my journal look like depreciation blah, blah, depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation got it I'm going to put AQ for short. Okay. And for the first year, how much was the depreciation expense for? $31.50. For $31.50. That is correct. Okay. Now, how would I journalize my depreciation for the second year? Yes, it would be the same thing, right? Depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Okay. But this time, how much was my depreciation expense for year two? $33. $33. 
Boom. That's it. Any questions here? Straightforward. As long as you have the worksheet that has all the formulas, this should be easy. Okay. So now we're moving on to question four through six. Same scenario, same uh, type of concept, except this time, right? We purchase a truck, okay, for $36,080 which includes all fees, okay? And it has a salvage value of $5,000, okay? Its useful life is seven years, excuse me, and has mileage up to 150,000 miles, okay? And you put this truck into service on August 25th, all right? So assume that the, uh, uh, sorry, and assume that the, the adjustments is at the end of the year, okay? That means our when we depreciate our first year, it's going to be as of December, okay? So in this case, what did I buy? A truck. We bought a truck, okay? How much was the truck? Thirty-six eighty. Okay. What was the salvage value? The number of useful life. Seven years. Okay. What was its total numbers of units that it could produce? 150,000 miles. So in this case, it's not based on how much it can use. It's based on how many miles that the car can drive. Okay, and when did you place it in service? August 25th. Okay. So in this case... When can I actually start depreciating it? September. September. But in this case, does it matter? Okay. I'll give you a hint. No, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you still recorded how much you drove that year. So in this case, notice this. I drove only 10,000 for the very first year. So that's going to be September, October, November, December. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's um, solve for my depreciation basis. What's my depreciation basis? Thirty-six thousand eighty. Excellent. Thirty-one thousand and eighty dollars is going to be my depreciation. It the depreciation basis. Okay. What's my per unit rate going to be? Okay, so in this case, we're going to take my depreciation basis divided by my total amount of units that it could produce. So in this case, I'm looking at how much is it going to cost me per mile, okay, which is going to cost me, how much did you say, Erica? I said 3.108. So don't be divided. 
10,000. Not 10,000. That's how much you produce that year. Oh, it's 150. Yeah. Yeah, we need to look at all of its miles because this is where we're calculating how much is it going to cost me per mile when I use my when I use my fixed asset. In this case, when I use my truck, it's going to cost me um 20 and 72 cents per mile that I use my machine or I use my truck. Okay? You're going to round it up. Where I would re recommend you not to round this number up, we round the depreciation expense, yes. But I recommend not to do um, the rounding for the, um, the cents here, just because um, if you're driving 1,000 miles, right, you, and you decide to bring it up to 21 cents, right, you can actually depreciate too much. I mean, at the end of the day, you have a choice. You can round as long as your answers get to this ant to get to this number right here, to thirty one eighty at the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I drove for the first year ten thousand miles, okay, how much is my depreciation expense for year one? So once again, this is where I'm going to use my equal round formula because I want my numbers to be rounded to the nearest penny. So you said 207.2? 207.2? You said, you said, I said the rate, not the yeah. behind the power grid. 10,000. I got the 207.2. Okay, never mind. I, I, I just want to calculate so it should be 10,000. Yes, it's 10,000. Oh, yeah. I think I missed the other one. That's okay. But you did got this. You got this. You got the, you got the closest amount. So it's 10 by 10,000 unit, by 10,000 miles. So in this case, we use $2,072. So then what is going to be my accumulated depreciation for the first year? Same number, 2072. Correct, because this is my first year. I don't have any uh, accumulated depreciation from the previous year. I just only have my current year's depreciation expense. Good. So then, last but not least, what is going to be my book value? Twenty nine thousand and eight dollars. Okay, try again. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so in this case, we're not taking depreciation basis. That's a lot of mistake. Uh, mistakes a lot of students do. We're not because we want to take it from the total asset cost. So in this case, my total cost of my asset is thirty six eighty. Yes. Yes, a lot of students see that they make a mistake there too. So it'll be thirty-four thousand. Thirty-four thousand. Good. Okay. So remember, book value. It's going to be the total asset cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, because we're trying to see. Well, if, if I decide to sell my truck on the first year, right, it could be worth right now. Right now, it's going to be worth 34000 But that means I could sell it either over or under, okay? But I can never, ever sell it for 36000 because I already used 10,000 miles on it, okay? Sometimes um, it could be depreciated way lower than that, right? It just This is just giving you an estimated amount of how much 
ideally your truck is now worth, okay? Because you've already used 10,000 miles on it already, okay? All right, so let's keep working here. So what's gonna be my depreciation expense for year two? I'm sorry, what's my depreciation basis for year two? It's going to be the same, yes. So in this case, because I know that this is going to be the same every single year, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it all down. Okay? Yes, no matter what year you're on, your depreciation basis will always be your asset cost minus salvage value. It will not change for any reason. So that's where, okay, that means for the depreciation basis, I could pretty much fill out my table a lot quicker because... I already know that this column right here is gonna stay the same once I solve for the first one. And what else stays the same? The rate, stays the, same. the rate also stays the same. So therefore, I could copy all of those down, okay? Good. So then, what is gonna be my depreciation expense for year two? If I drove a total of 25000 for year two. Just about 80. Good. Okay. Now I drove an additional $5,180 worth, right? So then what's going to be my accumulated depreciation here? If I already used 2,072, right? 7252. 7252, right? Because in this case, I'm adding it on there because this is how much I used it in total. So then if I used $7,252 worth of the truck, how much is it worth now? What's my book value as of year two? Twenty three. Okay, you, you. Okay. Good. Okay. So once again, you're gonna take your um, total cost right here of thirty six, and you're gonna minus the seven. Should give you twenty eight eight two eight. Okay. Good. All right. What's my depreciation expense for year three if I drove 19,000 miles? $3,936.80. Good. So therefore, if I drove an additional $3,936.80, how much is going to be my total accumulated depreciation for year three? Yeah, $11,188.80. Good. Which then brings my book value to be now... Good. Okay. All right. Year four, if I drove a total of 20,000 miles on year in year four, what's my total depreciation expense going to be now?
for test of 144? Yes. Good. Okay. So then what's my accumulated depreciation for year four? Mm -hmm. Which then brings my book value to be Thousand seven forty seven twenty. Good. Okay. So let's keep going. We got three more years. Okay. So in this case, right on year five, I drove additional eighteen thousand miles. So in this case, what's my depreciation expense for year five? Three thousand seven hundred thirty nine point six. Good. Accumulated depreciation. Nineteen zero six zero two forty. Good. Which then will now bring my book value down to Good. 17, 17, 60. Okay. So then if I drove an additional 22,000 miles, what's my depreciation expense going to be for year six? $4,558.40. Good. Which then will bring my accumulated depreciation to be? $23,630.3. Good. Which then, if I have this much for my depreciation expense, how much is going to be my book value as of year six? Good. Four thousand. Okay, let me check my math. Okay. Because it would be the accumulated depreciation minus the cost of the car, correct? Uh, no, it'd be the, it, that's it. The opposite. It'd be the total cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation. So last but not least, on year seven, we drove 26,000 miles. All right. So what's my, or what's my um, depreciation expense for year seven? Okay. Which then brings my accumulated depreciation to be for year seven.
Last but not least, what is my book value as of year seven? Now that I use twenty nine thousand and eight dollars, should be the salvage value, right? It should be salvage value, but what did you get? I already have a great number, so if anyone wants to type out that number, <laughs> no worries. I got seven thousand seventy four. Seven thousand seventy two. Okay. Now in this case, right? How old is actually my asset? Is it really is it really seven years? Seven years old. When did I place it into service? In January. Did I place no, it? In August. In August. So how old is my asset? Six. And a half. So therefore, you can continue on because you still have half. Uh, you still have half a year left to depreciate it. Okay. In this context, right? What it so that means it could go on for a year eight. Now here, what is my capacity for driving? Correct. So if we add all from one to seven, whatever is left is just going to produce on that track. Correct. Okay, that's one way that you could do it, right? And then you just move forward. Or we know one thing here. We know that at the end of its life, it must equal to $5,000, right? Yes. And you can work backwards. But we won't work backwards today. That will, I mean... We will today, uh, but not for this problem. So in this case, right, we know for a fact that this has to equal a total of 150000 right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to take all of my information, all right, and I get a total here of 35, that does not look right. Okay, I have a total of 140,000 miles. So how much more can I actually drive? 20,000. 10,000, right? 10,000. Good. 10,000 miles is what I have left to use for my machine on year eight, but my asset is only six and a half years. Okay. So in this case, once again, we know that the depreciation basis and the rate will stay the same. So in this case, right, what is my total depreciation expense for year eight? Two thousand seventy-two. What is my total accumulated depreciation? Thirty-one eighty. Thirty-one eighty. So then, therefore, what should be my book value now? Excellent. So that's exactly what we needed to look for, right? We need to make sure that our book value is uh, salvage value, right? Second thing is, look, my accumulated depreciation matches my depreciation basis, right? Here we met our capacity, right? The total of all eight years is now 150000 But second of all, right, because we place it in service as of August 25th, it's only 
a, it's only six and I think six and a quarter because September, October, November, December is four, four months. So six years, six years and four months. So therefore, it still has continuing life. It could still keep going, all right, for another year. But in this case, I'm treating the year as once I reach the 10,000, that's it. I'm done with it. Right? I have a question. Yes. Um, so this is how we would break it down for tax purposes for the business? Tax pur value, purposes? Yeah. Why are we, um, why are we, are we accumulating, um, trying to figure out the depreciation of each item? Is that how we do it when we would go? Is the job expecting you to do that? Yes. Yes, because think about it. If you bought a machine for $10,000 and in your book, it you, you record it as $10,000, right? And you're using it a lot. Do you expect in five years from now, it's still going to be $10,000? No, it will. It would depreciate. So, when you claim it on your taxes as your write-off for each year for your business expenses, I don't believe so for depreciation. Depre unless you are selling it. Okay, then. Then, then yes. Come into factor. Right, because you'll either get a gain or a loss. So, so what is the purpose of this? Of this? Um, of breaking down the depreciation for each value. That's what I need to know. Is, does this help us? Is, is this what the job would be looking for if we went to go do a job in this field? This is definitely a basic te basic method that you should know when going into accounting in general because think about it. You buy a printer and you're using it. Do you think it's going to hold its value? If a company buys a printer and the company is using it on a regular basis that I'm working for, would they expect me to break down the value each year? Yes. Because it, 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 system be doing that? I'm sorry. Wouldn't their system, the, the, the system that they're using, the program, wouldn't that do that automatically? Not automatically. You have to actually um, manually calculate this. Oh, okay. Yes. You have to know these for the financial statements, right? Correct. Because this is the because uh, depreciation is adjustment entry, right? You need to make you need to show on your books that you used your assets because if you don't then you're you're gonna have too much assets as in you have uh so this truck is what thirty six thousand dollars because you don't depreciate it or you don't record it your book is gonna always say that your truck is worth it's worth thirty six thousand dollars when in reality that's not true you drove it especially right off the parking lot that's an automatic five thousand dollar deduction You have to adjust because when you submit your financial statements to the government, they need to see that you are adjusting or you're making sure that you um, depreciate your fixed assets because once you buy it and you use it, that's it. It doesn't hold its value over time. The only time that you will need to report it is if you do end up selling the asset and you used it and you either took a loss or you took a gain on it. And that's where, that's the important part for IRS is that it's showing that you um, are reporting either a loss or a, um, a gain on it. But second of all too is it also shows that, hey, the value of your company is slowly decreasing because you're using your assets. They don't hold their value over time. You can't say that, I have a machine for $20,000 and expect 10 years later that the machine is going to hold $20,000 in my books. That's impossible. If I used it, touched it, turned it on even, it already loses, it already, it's already worn out and used. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. 
So let's go. Okay, Nathan. Question. Uh, on the previous exercise, did you use the differentiation rule to get the top value? And tell me how I got confused. Why? Because this one, the book value, right? I mean the the um the depreciation basis is identical to the asset cost because in this case my asset cost is 150 minus zero. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So in this case, it's the same. Yeah, it's the value of the asset is the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so how am I going to record my, so the next question, two questions is record the adjustment entry for the first year, okay? Assume that adjustment entries are uh, done on December 31st, okay? So at the end of the year. So what should be my journal? Good, excellent. I'm just going to copy these from here. Okay. So then depreciation expense for the first year, how much was it? Okay, good. 2,072. Okay. What's the depreciation for the second year? Fifty-one eighty. Fifty-one eighty. Okay. Boom. All right. And remember, so every year you're going to be calculating this amount your accumulated depreciation, as you can see here, right? We keep adding, 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 adding. These numbers are going to match your general ledger account for the accumulated depreciation. Okay? So we haven't talked about the general ledger. Well, we have talked briefly about it, but we haven't practiced it. So I'll show you this when we dive into our fictitious business after the exam. Okay, so in this case, right, every, every year that you do this or every month, depending on when you want to do your depreciation, it's going to hold, um, it's going to be the depreciation expense for either that year or that month that you calculated. Okay, so here it is. There's my journal. That's going to happen every single year. Once again, any other questions for this exercise? No? Okay. Um...